It's our friend Gordon G. Chang, and I follow him on Twitter at that Twitter handle, Gordon, Gordon G. Chang, and I encourage you to do so. And he is standing by now to give us his thoughts on things. Gordon, great to see you again. Welcome back. You're on with my friend Sheila Gunn-Reed and I. Um, I think it's fair to say that foreign relations are not the top concern of this election. They rarely are, but th this really is a domestic and economic election. But out of the corner of their eye, I think Americans are paying attention to Ukraine and the war and the saber rattling and the fact that we're in a proxy battle against a nuclear army over there. We certainly are, Ezra. But there's one foreign issue that does affect Americans, and it does affect their vote, and that is Mexico. Mm -hmm. That is the southern border. Remember, China is there. Uh, we know it because there's record amounts of fentanyl coming across. That is fentanyl that is manufactured in China. The ingredients are sent to the two cartels on the Mexican border. They mix them and they send them across. So that's one issue, because that was 77,000 Americans last year who were killed by illegal fentanyl. Hmm. And this, these fentanyl gangs are supported by the Communist Party because they could not operate without the blessing of the party in the party's near total surveillance state. So we have a, a situation where it does affect our votes, especially in places like Arizona. Hmm. But as you point out, things like Ukraine, things like Taiwan, they're on the back burner. But these are issues which could go to the front of the burner very, very fast, especially considering some of the crazy talk we heard from Xi Jinping today. The guy sounds unhinged. He's got his finger on the button. Um, and uh, he's got unprecedented political power in China. So this is a really dangerous situation. Well, let's take a minute on that because I, I haven't been yeah. following that closely, and I know you were a very avid follower. I know Xi Jinping, there were questions, is he really in control? He had the the party conclave, I forget the uh, name of it. So it's not d democratic by any stretch, but he does have to, to play political games with other rivals. Uh, how did that How did that go? Um, I, I see the headline in the Daily Mail today, China will focus on preparing for war, Xi Jinping declares. So it, it sounds like maybe he got through his uh, leadership rivalry by becoming more bellicose. Is that right? Well, yes. Um, what was really striking about today was that he said that the external situation for China is unstable and uncertain. Well, it certainly isn't. Um, nobody's threatening China. What is unstable and uncertain um, is the internal situation in uh, the country. Because of the COVID lockdowns, people are seething. We saw the open defiance of the party in Zhengzhou, which is in the central part of China. That's where uh, more than half the world's iPhones are made at one plant, Foxconn, a Taiwan-owned plant. Hmm. Um, and um, we, we saw uh, last weekend People just stream from the plant, um, escaping, climbing over fences. And what was interesting, Ezra, is that um, it was not just the people leaving. It was uh, people in the surrounding areas helping them. So you had truckers, dump trucks, flat tr uh, flatbed trucks, pickup trucks, tankers um, were taking people away from the plant. And that was at great risk to the truckers themselves because they could have been imprisoned for all of this. So um, I think Xi Jinping was not referring to the external situation, because if he did, he was really unhinged and huh. we'd really have to worry. But I think that he is looking at the internal situation, seeing how bad it is and becoming bellicose as a way of trying to distract the Chinese people from mistakes, from policies which he is clearly responsible for, which are clearly responsible for domestic debacles and for which he has no answers to solve. Wow, that's incredible. You know, when the lockdowns first began in the West, I remember seeing some videos coming from China, some of which I now realize were probably doctored or misinformation. I remember that famous one of someone just literally collapsing on the street, and that was COVID. And a lot of these were generated in China, and I, I think I probably was taken in by some of them. And, I, and part of me thought, ah, oh, this is China's way to scare the West into locking ourselves down while they move on. And I remember, you know, by... By New Year's Eve, uh, flipping from 2020 to 2021, I, I know Wuhan was back to normal. They had fireworks, and the West was really getting locked down. And I thought, uh-huh, they just scared us into locking ourselves down. But it seems a little different now. I see images out of China, and maybe, again, I'm getting doctored video, that China is actually going ahead with its zero COVID, and they're going ahead more strictly than ever. So 
it, maybe it was uh, to hurt the West, but they're they're actually enslaving themselves. Like I think that I, I don't know why, but I think parts of China and it looks like it's sporadic are locking down harder than ever. Is that am I wrong on that? It's hard to know what's really going on there, but I think they've gone nuts on on COVID, even though it's almost twenty twenty three. Yeah, they've gone insane on COVID. And the reason is that Xi Jinping is using the COVID rules to control the Chinese people. He is known as the author of the zero COVID policy, which is to do everything possible to prevent any transmission of the disease. And what it's done, even if it's been successful in um, reducing COVID, it's caused so many other problems because people can't go to hospitals. Uh, we see COVID jumping all around the country. Right now, it's in Guangzhou, which is a really important domestic um, center for uh, manufacturing. Um, and this is a really bad story because it's disrupting the Chinese economy. But the other thing that it's doing is um, the Communist Party right now is in a panic because from the very first moments of the pandemic, you go back to 2020, like January, um, the party has been using its control of COVID to say that it is as a superior form of government, that Chinese communism is better than Western democracy. So every COVID case now is considered to be a threat to Communist Party rule. It's a test of legitimacy. And, you know, Canada, the United States, you know, Sweden, we're all doing OK. But China right now is really tied up in fits. And I think the, I think Xi Jinping is just going berserk. Wow. I know we only have you for a few more minutes. I'm really grateful for you joining us at this hour. Let me bring my friend Sheila Gunn-Reed in. She's based in northern Alberta, our chief reporter. Sheila, uh, you really have at our disposal in Gordon, one of the world's most foremost uh, America-oriented, national interest-oriented geopolitical observers. So put your best question to Gordon while we've got him for a few more minutes. <laughs> That's a lot of pressure, boss. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I wonder, is this Chinese overreaction, is it threatening to spill over in the region in the same way that it did back in 2020? I don't think so, Sheila. And the reason is everyone's looking at this and saying, you know, China is just destroying itself. Um, this is a case of national suicide. And I don't think other countries want to do that. It, it, do that. So, I mean, other, other countries in the region, all surrounding China, are taking much more relaxed uh, views of the disease and are getting through it a lot better. Um, so um, China is the only country that is at this point trying to destroy itself. Gordon, great to see you again. Again, my friends, as I always tell you when we have Gordon on the show, do yourself a favor on Twitter. Gordon G. Chang is the Twitter handle to follow. I learn more from Gordon than from all mm. other China observers combined. Great to see you again, my friend. Thanks for taking the time with us. Well, thank you, Ezra. And thank you, Sheila. Right on. You got it. Freedom in 2022 is your right to disagree with me anytime on anything in your heart, online, or in the public square. Freedom in 2022 is also your right to live your life however you see fit without hurting me or, for that matter, being bothered by me. But freedom in 2022 is in very real danger under constant attack by Justin Trudeau through his censorship bills, his attacks on gun rights, his attacks on farmers, and his attacks on peaceful protesters. These people have even tried to denormalize our flag. At Rebel News, we're not afraid to have dangerous discussions that Justin Trudeau, the media, and big tech censors say we're not allowed to have. And we want to have them with you at our upcoming Rebel Live events, first in Toronto, November 19th, and again in Calgary, Saturday, November 26th. I'll be there with dozens of other rebels and rebel-adjacent free thinkers, and I hope that you'll join us. Just go to rebelnewslive.com to get your tickets today, but do not sleep on this because these tickets are going fast. See you soon.